some relationship advice I would give to my younger self is to let it flow. Let it authentically unfold, right? It's, you don't have to force what is for you. You don't have to overdo what is for you. So when that person is for you, you will know, right? There's not confusion. There's no, I need to outwork this person or I'm going to give my all and they're going to give me some. No, because when it's from God, it does. It becomes so effortless. It doesn't mean you don't have to put effort into it to keep it, but it becomes so natural. So what I would tell myself is, to let it flow because it will all unfold whether he's for you whether she is for you or not you know, the truth will be revealed hi i'm tiffany i'm a 32 year old mom and business owner and i've struggled with my mental health my entire life let's have a conversation according to the most recent data if you're watching this you're probably under the age of 30 and i've been thinking a lot about how drastically things changed in my life after that point and I know we're from a different generation, but the things that I struggled with really aren't that different from the things that you're probably struggling with right now. Struggling with worthlessness and anxiety and depression, struggling with comparison. But the one thing that your generation has that I didn't have is evidence everywhere that people who struggle with mental health still get to thrive. And if I could give this version of me one piece of advice, it would be to stop giving a fuck a lot sooner because struggling with your mental health is hard enough without dealing with other people's judgments and opinions you get to be healthy wealthy and blessed on the way this exam season i want you to focus on what you can control aka the revision that you put in rather than the grades you can't control what's going to happen on results day but you can control what revision you do now to make those grades as good as possible so i want active recall i want past exam questions not predicting exam papers working for 25 minutes break for five minutes keeping our productivity super super high and good luck I just received the most eye-opening email. I've been collecting advice from older people about what they wish they would have known when they were younger, and you have to listen to this one. One year into being a lawyer, I knew with 100% certainty that I hated being a lawyer. I went to my friends and family, and they all told me the same thing. You just spent eight years going to school to become a lawyer. It would be so stupid to quit now. So, I didn't quit. I spent over 50 years practicing law. 50 miserable years. It could have only been one miserable year but I made it 50. My advice, don't continue to do something that makes you unhappy just because you've invested time into it. Meet your 18 year old self and you're allowed to say three words. What are they? Love yourself more. Or maybe forget those assholes. One or the other. Hey you, yeah you. I have one thing to share. If you are, let's say under 21, those really developing years, you may be in middle school, you may be in high school, and you have something that you love to do or you have, and it may not just be the coolest thing. Maybe you got made fun of for it. That's okay. Keep doing it. You have purple hair and you love purple hair, but it's not the cool thing. Keep the purple hair. If you're not a big drinker and your friends are peer pressuring you to drink, don't give in. It doesn't matter. Staying true to you is what's going to make you feel good at the end of the day. You don't need to fit in. And if you're not, you are meant to stand out. I say this because I was never the cool kid in high school and middle school. I got made fun of for working out and taking care of myself, for not choosing to drink, and for just no damn reason because I wasn't the coolest, richest kid in the school. Always follow your heart, follow your passion. Even if it doesn't seem right, you'll end up where you need to be. Here are five things I wish I knew in my 20s. One, start your skincare routine early and be consistent because once you get wrinkles you can't undo that two the struggle's a blessing you're gonna look back one day and be happy that it actually happened to you three don't diet eat whatever the fuck you want but in moderation four people are in your life for only two reasons to either lift you up and motivate you or to teach you a lesson so learn the difference and move on and finally, number five is if you are dating someone and you see or feel any type of red flags, just get rid of them. It's not worth it. It really isn't. Now your turn. Tell me what advice you would give to your younger self. 
Okay, girlies, I'm going to give you one, count it, one, just one piece of advice that's going to get you through every relationship you ever go through in your life. Just one piece in your life, probably like, what could it be? Like, what advice are you going to give me that's going to make me just have successful relationships? Um, and it is, if you ever catch yourself writing a text to him in your notes app, he is 100% not the one for you. That's it. That's all. One of things I wish I knew when I was younger. It is okay to be bad at things. I like to sing, but I was always nervous to sing in front of other people. I thought that if my voice cracked or if I didn't hit every note, that people would think I was a bad singer. And the truth is, maybe I was a bad singer. But it's okay to be bad at things. You have to be bad to get good. So embrace the process, keep working, you'll get there. What's one piece of dating advice you would give your younger self? I would invite community into my relationship early on because oftentimes we get so amazed by how they make us feel and we're not really looking at who they actually are. Because sometimes as women, we're looking at potential and not who they are. This one's really tough because I wish the advice could be like, be you, be proud, don't apologize. But that just like wasn't realistic for me where I was. My parents brought me up in the Lutheran church and a lot of people there were really homophobic. And I feel like in the community, people of color were really only accepted if you like acted like a white person. Like if you were culturally white, it was okay. But as soon as you started like being ethnic, it, it was gross and people didn't like it. And then bleh. so I think my advice to myself, like my really practical advice would just be like, do anonymous things online. Like I had a Tumblr and everything, but I never really like made online friends or like reached out to people or had like mutuals who I knew. So I think if I had built that kind of community for myself when I was a kid, that would have been really helpful. Like I could have been able to explore my identities without putting myself in danger. All right, so it has been a minute since I've sat down and had a little chit chat with you guys, but I was just thinking, this is something I wish somebody would have told me or that I would have known before I came out or was trying to figure out my sexuality. One, it's okay that almost every single day you're going to doubt yourself, you're going to change your mind, you're going to change your mind again, like new people, like new things. That's completely okay. It's okay to be confused. It's not always going to make sense. It's also okay if you come out as gay, as bisexual or as straight to then change your mind again. And just because you put that a label on yourself initially doesn't mean you have to stick to it. We are human beings. We're always growing. We're always evolving. We're always changing. And if you need to change that label or for a matter of fact, I think sexuality is fluid, not put a label on it at all. You can do that as well. And you have every right to do that. And you shouldn't worry about what other people think. Worry about yourself and how you live your life and enjoy it. This advice email is really good too. This is from someone who was married in their 30s. They divorced and now they've remarried and they've been married for a really long time. So he says, with my first wife, I worked very hard, but I was gone very often, but I took her on a really expensive vacation every single year. He says, with my second wife, I learned my lesson. I take her on weekly dates and I spend time with her at night instead of at work. So I can't really afford the expensive vacations anymore, but we're happier. And here's what I've learned. It's not about what you do every once in a while that matters. It's about what you're doing every day. Ladies, the day you have to message another female to tell her to leave your man alone, that's the day you need to leave your man alone. Date the guy that makes you laugh and takes care of you when you're sick. Because life has both ups and downs, and you want the one who sticks around for both.